You know, tonight, I, uh, I think it's important that we share a little bit from our hearts to you guys about what we've gone through over the past few years. And so we've traveled around, you know, we've had the privilege of going to many different places around the world. Over the past 11 years, we've performed in 49 of the 50 states here in the U.S. If anybody has any connections in Vermont, they're holding out on us. <laughs> they're the last ones. But uh, man, it's been, it's been amazing traveling around. We've been to about 17 or 18 different countries around the world. Tried all sorts of interesting food. We should start a TV show. But uh, you know, I have to say, if there's one theme that I have seen everywhere that we've traveled, everywhere that we go, if there's one thing that is common amongst all peoples, all countries, all states, is that there are hurting people mm. everywhere. And as I, I, I travel around the world, I, I look at these people and I see their heartache and I see their hardships. And the question has to be asked, God, where are you in all of this? There are believers around the world suffering. There are believers in this room tonight who are hurting. And I've been asked the question before, if God is love as you say that he is, as he claims to be in the Bible, then how could God allow this situation to happen in my life? God, how could you allow my mother, my sister, my brother to be dying of cancer? God, how could you allow my best friend to be taken in that car accident? God, how, how could you allow my finances, everything I've worked for my entire life to be ripped away from me in a moment? I'm losing everything. And in that moment of heartache, our faith is tested. We begin to wonder, God, where are you in all of this? I've seen my own heartache in my own life. Just to be perfectly honest with you right now, my, my wife's been struggling with some bowel issues. She's been in and out of the hospital. She had a volvulus, so it was extremely painful. I've been praying for her health and God worked a miracle right before they rushed her into emergency surgery. The doctor came in and said, I wanna wait just a little bit. Ultimately time, watch her for another day or two and it healed itself on its own. The doctors were saying it was a miracle. It was miraculous. And God, this is amazing. God is working wonders. It's an answer to prayer. Only to find about a month later, she found herself with issues again and back in and out of the hospital. And I watch my kids. I look in their eyes as they see their mom go to the hospital and wonder, is she going to be okay? And I can't answer that question. A few years ago, my uncle, a man who was a brilliant man, a man who was full ride academic scholarship to Stanford. This guy was brilliant. Very strong man, tall, athletic. He had everything going for him. He started a telecommunications company. He was very successful. He sold his company for millions of dollars. He was wealthy. He had it all. He was diagnosed with brain cancer. And I watched as this man who was once very strong, very healthy, begin to wither away. And as I watched him begin to die. I saw something happen. As his body broke down, he was vulnerable for the first time in his life. And I'll never forget, I, I went to visit him there in Billings, Montana, and I sat at an Applebee's right across the table from him, and I looked at him, and most of his face had been removed from the surgeries. His face was sunken in, and his tear ducts no longer worked properly, and they constantly flowed with tears he had to wipe away constantly. And I looked at this broken man, and I said, how are you doing? And he looked me in the eyes and he said this. He said, as brutal as this has been, as difficult as it has been on me and on my family, and as much as I would never wish this upon anybody, I can't say that I'm not thankful that it's happened to me in my life. And I looked at him in disbelief and said, why? 
He said, because it's made changes in my life that needed to happen, changes that would have never happened any other way. And in his vulnerability, he found God. In his vulnerability, he found out what was important in life. And ultimately, I believe that this day, I believe my uncle is in heaven because of his cancer. And in that moment, I saw just a small glimpse how God can use tragedy for great good. And when I go through hardships in my life and I say, I don't know what the end is going to look like. I don't know how it's all going to turn out. The question is, do I believe that God is in control? Do I believe that I am in his hands and he has a purpose and a plan no matter what? Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts I have towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope to bring you to a glorious end. You see, the promise is that the ending of the story will be wonderful. The ending of the story will be beautiful. But I cannot stand here and promise you tonight that your ending will be beautiful tonight. Life is hard. And God does not promise that you will not suffer persecution. God does not promise that life will be easy. He simply promises that I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. No matter what you go through. The question is, will you hold on to your faith? Will you believe that God is who he says he is? Will you believe that he has a purpose and a plan for you? Because if you cannot walk through the valley believing, you have nothing to hold on to. Either God is who he says he is or he's not. Period. No matter what happens in your life. You look at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they said, we will not bow down to this idol. You can throw us in the fiery furnace if you want, and our God can save us. But even if he does not, we will still not bow down. We may die in that fiery furnace, and that's okay, because we know where we're going. And tonight, in your heart, in your trial, do you have the hope of heaven? Do you understand that the ending of the story, though the healing may not come today, and we pray for that. I know that God can do miracles. I pray for miracles in my life and for the lives of those around me. I've seen God work miracles, and I know he can, but if he says no, do I have the hope of heaven? You see, as believers here tonight, that is what separates us from the rest of the world, is that we have Christ in our lives, and we know that we're forgiven, that we're set free, and that someday we will spend eternity with him in paradise. And that is the hope that we can hold on to. And so tonight, whatever you're going through, may I challenge you to hold on to your faith, to put your trust in God and say, God, I know that you are faithful. I know that you are just. And no matter what happens in my life, I'm willing to surrender to you. I'm willing to give my life up to you. I pray for miracles. I know that you're capable of it. But God, even if you choose to use my life to impact eternity, and so be it. And I have seen in my own life that the greatest, greatest trials and the greatest tragedies in my life have been the times that God was doing the greatest work for eternity. You see, God looks from an eternal perspective. He cares about the ending of the story. He cares about eternity far more than he does about our comfort right here. Right now. And so tonight, I ask you, will you trust him? Will you put your faith in the God that loves you?